On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Mark, Donnie, and I are going to explore time travel. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Mark Downey. Hey, Mark. How are you? Hi there. I'm doing good, thanks. How about you? Great. Joining us on Teams uh, from, where are you at? Ohio, the Buckeye State. Excellent. Mark is a PM in Visual Studio land, focusing on Azure and diagnostics. Right. And we're going to talk about some very cool things coming in the realm of debugging. Right. Yeah, talking about time travel debugging. Excellent. I love that name. <laughs> yeah, so time travel debugging basically is our, is our reverse uh, debugging engine. Um, it allows us to uh, record a web app running in, in Azure, and it allows us to allow you to go forwards and backwards over a particular code. And the reason why that we think that's useful is because many times when you have problems in production, you kind of know what the error is, but you don't necessarily know the steps that we're taking to get to that error. And sometimes that's just as important as knowing what the error itself was it's, um, by itself. So kind of with, there's a problem in twofold. So one, knowing what the error is and then knowing how to get there. And so what we are allowing you to do in, in time travel debugging is record all the steps right up to your problem. And then that allows you to kind of look at it within your inner loop cycle. You mm -hmm. kind of get to kind of look at your problem as if you were debugging locally. But you really, this is right. all happening in Azure at scale. Right, and I think that's a, a key driver of this is that you're, the machine is running in Azure. It's running in the cloud. It's running in a server farm somewhere else. You don't Absolutely. have access to that machine. And it's entirely right. possible, of course, that the machine it's running on can change from time to time because it's just a server farm. So that makes the debugging issue that much harder, right? Yeah, exactly. So it, we all go through that. It works on my machine. Yes. It worked in my environment. Right. Right. And then it worked when we yesterday. Get it to, yeah. And, but then when we get it to scale, when we get it to our Azure environment, when we get it running against a database with all these records, and when we get mm -hmm. it with network latencies and all the other p possibilities, you don't quite know what it is is happening. And so what we think it would be really helpful for developers debugging in production and in Azure is to be able to see exactly the steps that are occurring in what order and, and, and then be able to use their inner development skills, inner, inner loop development skills that they've been using before they deployed and be able to use that again even after they deploy. Cool. Let's see it. Okay. Let me start. All right, so I'm going to dive in here. I'm going to, well, I've got a simple website okay. uh, running in Azure, on an Azure VM. Um, it doesn't do much, but um, I think we'll be able to illustrate exactly why time travel debugging will be helpful. So I'm going to attach snapshot debugger. And refresh, and, yeah, refresh our memory, what's a snapshot debugger? So a snapshot debugger is was our original um, advanced debugging technique for Azure, which allows you to take pictures of a process, right? So you could see at any line of code exactly what was going on. I can get full hydration of my Visual Studio experience, but it only takes a picture. So if a picture is worth a thousand words, our logs are those words, and we take a picture with with uh, Snapshot Debugger, and that shows you uh, a full look at what's going on at that particular line. So we still kind of we've used Time Travel Debugger in that same kind of vein, because now we're recording the whole thing, so a video is worth a thousand pictures. Okay, cool. So we are going to enable time travel debugging and for this, this is VM. A, sorry, this is a 2019 feature, Visual Studio 2019? This is Visual Studio 2019 Enterprise, yeah. Okay. And uh, we're going to attach to that to that server. And as you can see, my um, service continues to be responsive. Um, and the, I've got an indication now, Visual Studio is telling me I'm debugging an app in Azure. Um, but I think it's important to indicate that this is really different to normal debugging, remote debugging. Because with remote debugging, what happens, we, we would never do that in production because essentially we stop the process mm. in normal debugging. But that's not what happens with with uh, time travel debugging or with um, snapshot debugging. We essentially record, but then we continue to allow you to have access to that server. So this is safe for production environments. Oh, cool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a, what we call a snap point here. 
and I'm going to configure this snap point. And what that basically is, is an indication that this method, this Cartesian product private method, is one that I'm interested in getting more detail about. And so actually, I'm going to click to time travel for this particular method. And what that indicates is that I want to record this method all the way through it. So it, if it's complicated method, I get to see every single step within this method. So I'm going to go ahead and, and actually I could do this conditionally. So imagine if there were a particular user who was having an issue or a particular set of t account types, I could probably key in on those account types and only record in those particular conditions. Mm -hmm. But this time I'm just going to go ahead and, and do a regular recording. And then I'm going to send that collection plan, that, that snap point over to Azure. So now Azure knows I want to collect uh, information about this method here. And as you can see, it's a, a simple method with a couple of for loops in it. Right. So I need to trigger the recording of this particular um, method. And I'm going to do so by activating by activating the site so that it actually executes this particular code path. And what I'm looking for is for a recording to start. Um, and there we go. We've got a recording captured right here. In fact, we've got two indications. We've got one here. There's a check point where our uh, snap point was. And then we've got a recording here. So it's telling us that we've recorded successfully. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start debugging. And that will pull down that recording and allow us to atta essentially attach to that recording. And remember, this is not like um, remote debugging in that we don't stop the process when we are debugging. So essentially, we're able to go back and forth with um, the site. Other users are able to interact with the site. It doesn't impact them in any way. Um, so right now, what's happening is that I'm loading all the symbols associated with this project. Um, that's essential because um, the, the, the PDBs are essentially what keeps track of what lines of code we're hitting. So we have these instructions in memory, but we've got no way of really knowing what those instructions mean to a CS file. So it loads all of our PDBs, and it basically makes a connection between the recording it's taken and the Visual Studio experience that we're kind of used to and we've kind of been developing in. Okay, so this uh, indicates right now that we're in a debugging mode. This is kind of traditionally what we would expect to see when we would be doing any kind of debugging. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in a breakpoint here, right at the very end. Just to show you, I'm going to hit the continue button and drop all the way down. And now, um, what I'm doing now is debugging the recording. And again, just to re-emphasize, re my site's completely live. It's able to continue to serve my customers just right. fine. Ah, so this is um, not live debugging. You haven't stopped the app. You've exactly. recorded what happened, and then you set a breakpoint inside the recording, and you're kind exactly. of offline uh, yeah. debugging what just happened. Very cool. Exactly. So now I can go and see exactly what led up to um, us. And, and right now I can see in my locals window, I've got the results that I was about to return from this. It looks like it's eight. But I can go back to almost the start and kind of see where I started from. So mm. the, the results now, I'm back where it was no, just where we first started. Um, I can do something like set a breakpoint here and actually set a conditional breakpoint, right? So maybe I wanted to know what was happening in this inner loop here, in this uh, for each loop. Um, so I can set a conditional and I can say, um, what was happening when, I, excuse me, what was happening when I was equal to uh, zero and J was equal to one, let's say. Mm -hmm. And I can use my continue button to drop down into there and see any particular moment in time. So, so everything's recorded. And this record, this, this will also record if uh, a method was called from this method, right? And I get to, to use all of the new features from Visual Studio. Um, so, for example, at this point, I could use the search depth feature we added in Visual Studio 2019 and say, how many uh, properties or values um, have the word pie in it? And I can kind of scroll through my results. 
So I almost kind of get a full, I actually get kind of an even a better experience than I do with debugging because I'm going forward and backward with full fidelity. Mm -hmm. Every single line that was executed, um, I get access to my call stack. Um, I can see a list of my breakpoints I've set. I can use the immediate window to 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 check out different variables that may be in scope at this moment. Um, I get everything I need to see exactly what was going in production in, in some problematic situation. And do you get to see things like threads and memory usage and all that as well? Is that captured? Well, this, 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 is, this actually is recorded a single thread in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what we actually see in this particular example are the effects of a single call and the effects on... So a thread could make a call into this thread, but essentially we've recorded this thread, if that Got makes it. sense. Now, there was a, a feature that was similar to this, uh, I think it was IntelliTrace, right? Didn't that yes. give you the, the ability to do that? So how does this compare to that? So IntelliTrace is it's a great product, but IntelliTrace relied on us um, taking snapshots at particular moments in time. So it's almost like you're leaving crumbs behind at every so often, right? Um, so IntelliTrace gave you the ability to get these snapshots of a running process, but they, they only, um, it wasn't a continuous um, process. This is a, like, like I said, the difference between a recording and taking several pictures, okay. right? So you could take, you know, 10 pictures in a row, but recording a continuous sequence kind of gives you much more fidelity, much more detail. I see. So as I said, with, with this particular kind of um, process now, I can do things like step into, can step backwards, um, I can step forwards, I can step into and out of various methods that this may call. But again, we think that this kind of uh, this this kind of uh, detail and pulling it into you in a loop will give developers a really really good experience when it comes to debugging and and figuring out what issues are happening in Azure. So does this work with uh, just web apps at the moment? Will it will it work with additional um, pieces of code like? Uh, logic apps or functions or, or etc. So as of right now, we are focused on the Azure VM scenario with web apps. Mm -hmm. um, we are obviously very interested in pushing other scenarios and making sure we've we've kind of covered fully the Azure stack. But right now, we're focused on Azure VMs. Um, we are currently a preview, and so we're taking this opportunity to kind of solicit feedback. So genuinely, if, if developers get onto our sites and kind of provide feedback. It kind of drives what kind of we'll sure. be doing next. Okay, um, and it's the features in preview. So, um, is it an extension that's in preview? Is it? Uh, do you have to be using a preview of Visual Studio? How do you get this? So yeah, it's Visual Studio 2019 Enterprise. Um, it's actually a preview feature in the release of uh, Visual Studio okay. 2019. So if you've got Visual Studio 2019, you've got this. You've got this preview feature in there. Okay, here. and then if you want additional uh, iterations of the preview of snapshot debugging, then you could get those from future previews of future Visual Studio <laughs> releases. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I think it was clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's exactly right. Yeah, we, okay. We, we've got, yeah, yeah we've got, we've got um, adding, always adding new features and filling out gaps that we've got in previews that are coming for Visual Studio 2019. Very, very cool. All right. Uh, anything else you want to share? I think that's it. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Hope you enjoyed that. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.